Okay, this is the Lee Breach Lock Challenger Kit. I already popped the staples in. That's what it looks like when you first get it. There's a little thank you. Powder measure. And uh, why did I get the Breach Lock Challenger and not the Classic? Because it's my first time attempting this, and I figured if I like doing it that much and I go that crazy, then I can always step up. My guess is this is lighter than the steel one. Okay, things to know. It's got a little catch here. The catch is for primers, spent primers, really, when you're decapping. The tube's going to go on there. The tube's going to feed the spent primers away when you decap it. They have a decapping and resizing die. It does the two of them at the same time, I think. So, I also got, for another 12 bucks a die that just does decapping. Uh, the big home harm with that is you can decap, then tumble, then resize, and then trim. So, that's this. It's the breech lock one. So you can just drop in a little... Well, we'll get to it in a second. Safety powder scale. This is the thing that whenever you look at the reviews, everybody hates. I'm not sure why. I imagine I'm going to find out. Comes with a little tray, a base, and a little balance. So that's that. Magic paper. Funnel. The bar, which will eventually go into there, which apparently everybody complains the knob comes off. Uh, um, this is, I think, steel with, it feels like Cosmolino, some gook all over it. So that will eventually get a cleaning. This. Somehow this fits onto here. Case conditioning kit. Primer pocket cleaner. Oh. This is going to, after you trim them, this is to deburr the inside. Uh, and the rest of it is a big guess to me. Uh, that's to clean out the primer pocket. I still have some concerns that when I actually tumble the stuff without the primers in it, that I may wind up with uh, media inside the little primer pockets. So hopefully that doesn't happen. I did what everybody else did for the primers, uh, for the media. Went to Pet Center or Petco, one of those pet places, and got uh, lizard bedding, which is apparently crushed walnuts hand priming tool. These are all the little bases or shell holders for it. The cover for this. This, I'm pretty sure, is the base for this. That would be my guess. So, so far we got that somehow attaching to that, these little cleaner out parts, these are the bases for the, um, the hand primer, which I'm guessing, I'm hoping, is kicking around in here someplace, it is. Okay, it is the, their amazing primer. Uh, I didn't think it would be fun to prime on the press from all the little videos I watched. Yeah, this is the source of all my information, YouTube videos. Uh, it seemed hand priming was best, or at least easier or faster than priming on the bench. Here's the deal. The primers come in a box that matches this, similar. Similar sized, so... 
let's see, open, open. Uh, bingo. So you put the primers in there, or in here, not sure which, I think in here. My limited understanding is not to go crazy moving the primers around, because if any of them flip over, then that's annoying. Second tray, so I'm guessing that is you load two sets of primers in and then work your way through one tray and into the second tray. How does it come out? Don't really know. Big thing that everybody said was to grease this, so that's something I gotta get around to. And then the die sets that we saw before, the bases, I'm guessing one of them is in here for 223 and well that's about all I'm reloading right now, maybe 30 out six, but the dies I ordered are all for 223. So this one, dirt simple, throw a case in that's been deprimed and hopefully all cleaned and that kind of good stuff already and then push that down, pushes a primer into that, pushes a primer into the case. So, there's those, that goes with it, an extra one goes with it. Um, this is for this. This is all for this. Uh, resizing lubricant. That looks like fun. And that's the magic. There's nothing else in there. Things that I had to order separate in order to actually get all this going. One, you need at least one die kit. So I ordered dies for 223. So you have your choice. Each of them comes with three dies. Lee's a little funky this way. There's two sets, three dies each. So two, two, three. You can either get their pace setter or speed loader or something like that, pace setter. Uh, that's a set of three dies. That includes the resizing die, factory crimp, and a third die that I forget which one it is. I think they'll, they'll want to see the bullet. So big one is it includes the factory resize. Or you can get, I think there are other kits, the Premier Kit or the Premium Kit. It's the yellow box one. The yellow one includes the collet resizing, so you don't have to resize the whole bullet, the whole shell, just the collet, the top part. Uh, but it doesn't include the factory crimp, and everybody raved about the factory crimp. Just as the factory crimp is cheaper when you buy that die alone than the collet resizing crimp, which was like... 20, 21 dollars, whereas the factory crimp thing I think was like 12. I opted to get the kit that included the collet resizing and then I bought the factory crimp separate. So dies that are coming. It's a three set kit. It's got a full size, a factory crimp, and a third die. Or a full size, a collet crimp, and a third die. And then I got the factory crimp. So four dies total are coming. One's in a three set and then there's the fourth one. What else is coming? Uh, trimmer. They have a really cool trimmer. I mean, they have a, a dirt simple trimmer that you can do by hand, and that, that looked that's much like work. Uh, they have a cool trimmer that they just came out with. It actually mounts right in the top here. You bring a shell up to it, and it's got a little crank on the top. That was like another $12. This thing's like the land of Chinese food. It's like another $10, another $12, and before you know it, you're up another $100. This is about everything. Uh, about the only thing that anybody seemed to have a concern is that this was cast aluminum, and you can get, if you go for their classic, it's much heavier and stronger. Right now, all I'm doing is 223. It shouldn't be that tough a case. If I have grief and I eventually want to move to something else, I can always change out the press and still use everything else. Uh, something that I might get down the road, according to reviews, a better scale or an automatic one that just trickles the powder in on its own. Other than that, that's it. Any questions, any opinions, any advice, just leave it in the comments. Thanks. Okay, just to clarify a couple of things, now that I've read the instructions a little bit, every now and again we all have to suck it up and actually read the instructions. Uh, two things, a couple of things. One. These aren't actually one and a spare, they're actually different. This one's labeled small primer, this one's large primer. Uh, 223 would use small primer. So this would probably be like a save for some rainy day. Um, 
What else? I've already taken this apart. It comes apart pretty easily. You give it a little nudge and this comes out. I kind of already greased it a little bit. This tray will come out too. No need to take out the tray, at least not right now. Greased it up. They said to put grease or Vaseline. I threw a little bit of grease. Clips back in. Oh, beautiful. Now it's just wonderful. So, small primer. 223 uses small primer. Small rifle primer. So I'm putting that away. So that's that greased and done. This, I managed to put together. Uh, important things to know about this. If you can look down there. You see how there's like an opening? Turn it one way, you actually seal it off. You turn it the other way, you open it up. Uh, that's their big innovation, well, at least a big innovation. I'm guessing all of them do that because it's too simple a feature not to. Uh, what that lets you do is when you're done charging everything, you can close the valve on that, take it off, and go empty it back in, back into your powder holder. And you don't have to worry about it any spilling, and you don't have to worry about just storing it in there, which wouldn't be too good. So. That's that. I've mounted it on there. There's a special screw, third screw, to go into there. No, it doesn't seem to impact anything. You would think the screw's long enough that it goes through that some bad thing might happen, but it didn't. Screw it in. Don't tighten it too much because most of this housing is plastic. This is metal, but it's plastic connected to metal. So, With this all secured, it comes with two more screws. So if you've got so much space in your world that you can actually mount this permanently, God bless you. I'm not so lucky, uh, but I'll figure out something to attach it to. That's the story of that. Let's see, any other final things? Oh, here's how this went together. Yep. Sorry, I'm bouncing around. Back to the primer thing. These are all the little case bases, or case holders, for this. I chose number four, which is good for 223, and there's a little reference sheet in there that tells you. All you do is push this puppy down a little bit, so I can push it down in the hand, if you can see that. So push it down, drop this thing in, and you're all set to go. Now every time you slide a case in, push, two things happen at once. One, it primes the case that's in there, and number two, it brings the next primer kind of up and on deck. You actually hold it this way. So, as you can see, the pin here brings a primer into like this little holding pen. And then when you release it, that primer drops in there, assuming you're holding it like this. Hold it like this, it won't work. Got to hold it somehow like that. They say a 45 degree angle. I don't think that's critical, but I guess we'll find out when I actually do something. So, that's that. We already went over that. Resizing die won't need yet. Um, I put this together, and I didn't do that in the video, but take the hint. There's only three pieces. It's a bolt, a washer, and tighten it a little bit. There's four spots for it to fit, little dimples. It'll go in one of the dimpled areas. It can actually go on a non-dimpled area. I don't know how productive that would be. There's a little ending thing. I'm guessing that's for there. Um, I put a tiny bit of grease on there. That seems a tiny bit nicer. Maybe that's just in my head. Oh. They talk about the quick change system, so they say it's it's their, I think, breech loading. And what they mean is kind of like the way a breech on a, um, on a big gun is part threaded, or at least not technically threaded, because they're not at an angle. Space, thread, space, thread. It drops into a similar arrangement in here, so... Drops in, push this little stopper thing to kind of hold it until you pivot it around. Eh, eh. Right, let's try the other way because it might be easier. The tightness I'm guessing is because it's new because I've already had it in and out once or twice. Well, you'll have to trust me that it does pivot around and lock. There's a dimple here, the dimple locks there. Let's see if I can get it go this way. Well, trust me, it goes there. It'll probably be something else that I throw a tiny bit of grease on. You'll need one of these for each die. 
And technically you don't. Technically you can take each die out and put it into this and screw it in. The good part of using these, these collets, is you kind of set the die up in the collet exactly how you want it, in other words, height-wise, and then easy quick switch out. Really, the way these systems work is this will be a single stage system, so I got to keep switching the collets. Next step up has a turret, so you just turn the turret for each one. Better, I'm not going to do enough rounds to really justify that. At least I don't think so. Um, but even the system that has the turret up on the top, you're still turn it, do a step, turn it, do a step. I don't think that's too much faster, at least not in my mind, but uh, maybe somebody out there who actually has that is going to want to comment. Anyway, that's that. That's this part, this little piece. This is about the only other thing that I had to also install. There's a little O-ring in there. Watch when you put this on and screw this on that you do not rip the beans out of the O-ring. I'm guessing that's part of what contributes to people's complaint that this thing leaks a lot. This is their little adjustment screw. Apparently that needs to be screwed around with. Uh, last thing, very, very last thing. Two size primers. If you were going to prime on the press, which is an option, you would use one of these. I think you have to put this in anyway. I think. So, uh, this one looks like the small one to me. Why do I think you have to put that in anyway? Here's why. It comes with this, and you attach it with a screw. Once this is in place, it's actually, whoa, it's designed to catch the primers when you deprime. So you go to deprime, you put a little base in here, you put the shell in there, you'd push up. There'd be a die in here that would have a deprimer in it, or a decapping guy, it's called. It's like a big needle. The needle pokes down, pops the primer out. The primer, left to its own, if this isn't in, the primer would just kind of tumble down this channel and fall out here. Make a big mess. It wouldn't bother me too much, but maybe after 300 rounds you get a little PO'd because there's 300 primers all over the floor. Spent primers. Take this and put it in, even if you are not using it, I think, and it serves this function. As you deprime, the primer is going to fall down the channel, but kind of sit in there. As this comes down, the primer will fall the rest of the way down the tube. I'm going to turn it around for you. As the tube comes back up again, the primer kind of falls out of that hole, if you can see that hole. Falls into here falls down into there, and if the magic tube were attached here, it's going to fall down that hole into the tube, and I guess you can put a garbage pail down there. Or a garbage bag, and then uh, change the garbage bag every 10 million reloadings. That's the magic story. I'm going to try and figure out a way to temporarily mount it. Yes, I know Lee has a mounting system that lets you put these in and take them out. It still leaves some steel brackets on your, your work surface. Uh, I guess this is good if you have more than one of these, maybe for, for reloading more. I don't know. Uh, but that bracket was 30 bucks. I wasn't interested in paying the $30, so I'm going to figure out some way to mount this that it is removable. That's it. Leave a comment. Thank you.